as far as Tiger technology, we want to make sure that you guys know that we've been around actually for quite a while. We've been around since 2004. Now we've mainly been focused on the world of media and entertainment. So Alex and I come in peace from that world of media and entertainment. But what we've been doing is coming up with technology that is very applicable to a lot of different areas. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we've started mainly with data management. So providing all kinds of data management solutions for that media and entertainment market. We're about 50 people company. Alex is from Sofia. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. We have offices not only in Sofia, but also in the United States. And we're, uh, we've got so far somewhere around a few thousand customers. Again, primarily focused on media and entertainment. But as you know, with any kind of video, that extends into many, many places, whether it's government, scientific research, et cetera. So we have customers all over the place and all over the world in many different areas. <clears throat> the media and entertainment, we bring that up because it's important as far as what a, the, the type of market that it is. Uh, there obviously, when the video people worry about you know, performance, one thing is a frame drop that we've all heard about. You don't want things dropping frames. But they worry about missing pixels and things like that as well. So again, it's just it's very difficult. So <clears throat> without further ado, I'd, it's my pleasure to introduce Alex Lefteroff, who happens to be the CEO. He's the co-founder. He's also the CTO. So I'm going to turn it over to Alex so that we can get into the technology as fast as possible. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lance. Uh, so my name is uh, Alexander Lefteroff. I uh, live. Uh, and work in Sofia, Bulgaria. So I uh, want to give a little bit of a, uh, a few words about myself. Uh, like I said, I, I, my education is software engineering, and that's what I've been doing my entire life. Uh, starting the career in a post-communist collapsing country uh, is definitely a challenge, and that actually forces you to be uh, mm, a lot more flexible than normal. And uh, been, I have been learned to deal with all kinds of different uh, areas and problems in the software engineering. And uh, as part of my career, I have been uh, running teams and uh, creating solutions for all kinds of things, ranging from uh, voice over IP, uh, managing commercial airplanes, uh, analyzing uh, telemetric data for Formula One race cars, uh, uh, collaboration over on online collaboration, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I finally ended up of doing uh, storage solutions. Uh, it's almost I was dragged in there. And I guess this is my, my area of specialty now for almost uh, 20 years now. I've been de dealing with storage uh, problems and solutions. The beginning of the story that that we're here to tell actually happened in uh, like two and a half years ago when actually uh, IBM, we are a partner of IBM in media entertainment for many years. Uh, there are a lot of deployments in which our software runs in IBM's hardware. And we've been working closely with their storage architects and experts. And we, we, we got contacted like that about this time about the particular project that has nothing to do with media. And it has actually, they, use, they asked us whether we can uh, modify our technology to actually uh, use their object storage. Uh, the reason for that is that they were working on a project in surveillance for a big airport in Middle East, which practically ended up of, uh, because of a number of reasons, including uh, refresh of the hardware, uh, regulations that ended up in this region, uh, terrorist threats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the the problem they were trying to solve was that the airport was looking for. Uh, in, they were using like 300 cameras, uh, 300 HD cameras for the retention period of two weeks, and they were looking over a three-year period to raise this to 10,000 cameras, 4K with a retention period of six months. So basically, the calculation showed that they are talking about uh, approximately 15 petabytes of data at any given point of time. So IBM was trying to deploy a solution using uh, uh, surveillance software, which was based on Windows. So basically, it's something that gets the cameras and 
uh, puts them in the file system <coughs> and manages them. And yes, IBM can deliver the fast enough storage to, mm, of course, not from a single server, but to allow this performance to happen from multiple servers. But the problem that they were facing is that, that the, they cannot build 15 petabytes of a file system, <coughs> not, not in Windows, not in those days. I mean, uh, back then, there was still the limitation of Windows NTFS file system being 200, 256 terabytes. Not to mention that the cost of building such a thing was astronomical. And even for mm, the rich guys out there, that still was prohibitive. So basically, they wanted to build a solution that would use a much more cheaper and much more scalable and much more resilient object storage that they have, as known as uh, ICOS, uh, IBM Cloud Object Storage. But they have their on-prem uh, modification. And they wanted to deploy the solution by using the object storage and make somehow this uh, 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 surveillance software to work with object storage. Uh, so basically, uh, here are a little bit of, a, uh, uh, of the mandates of the solution that they required whether we can fix. And of course, this was Windows, which was we were experts in this area. Uh, to be 100% transparent, of course, this is always what, what does mean 100% transparent. The, the problem was that nobody knew at this point of time what exactly the application requires from a file system. So we cannot build something that is, uh, that is limiting, uh, limiting the file system uh, calls. Uh, which means that it has to be NTFS compliant. At least that was the requirement. And of course, the latencies and the bandwidth impact has to be not affected because of the performance required in this particular case. One thing that is very, very important, and actually this was, uh, this was one of my first questions to IBM, is why don't you use your solution? They have a, a solution that technically should be capable of solving that. The problem is that their solution, be, being based on Linux, which is called uh, Spectrum Scale, is practically has to stand uh, as a separate appliance. And that, for these security guys, is a very important thing. They don't want to introduce anything that they call a tamper point, which is where the data can be, I don't know, modified, attacked, whatever. So any external appliances from the data path between the capturing application and storage is considered a problem. So we being software only, the, the whole idea was to be put in a such a way that do, does not introduce tamper point. Yes, of course, that has to be software only, has to be hugely scalable because of these petabytes of data. And yes, the different targets is something that they wanted to not only be able to use the, their object storage, but uh, possibly NAS and even tape. So. Yeah, we, we sat down and we, we did a little bit of analysis about, uh, uh, just, just doing that. So basically we did a quick analysis about the capabilities of an on-prem storage or a file system that the applications were friendly with and an object storage. So I'm not going to go to each and every one of that, but overall object storage is a very limited subset of the storage features that a, a contemporary file system provides. Basically it's just a, uh, store and get the data, more or less. Uh, yes, of course, it's hugely scalable, hugely resilient, uh, searchable, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There are many features that make the store, uh, object storage the foundation of the, um, the, the storage, and especially for the cloud storage today. That's where the, the, the huge amount of data is uh, kept. But at the same time, by design, it cannot serve the requirements for applications that are built for using hierarchical structured data, meaning file system. So, and of course, it introduces a lot of latencies, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we went through doing these analysis, and we, we, we decided, uh, we, we, we found that we cannot provide a solution through our mandate by, by taking the approach of creating a virtual file system, which actually exposes the object storage as a, as a usable file system. For example, if you have a laptop and you have a, something like a OneDrive or a Google Drive or something like this, that's a, a virtual file system. <coughs> that would not work in such environment because it's basically <coughs> not a file system. It's a virtual one. It's very limited. It does not support all the functionalities of the file system, which the applications require. And so we ended up, of, after doing some analysis, we, we, we saw that these two things are so different that there is no way that you can choose one or the other. You actually needed to do both. So 
And because we really believe, based on our background, that the storage is, like we say, the platform for work. The storage is where you all the data that, that your services or applications or anything, they rely on your data and where it's stored and how it's being accessed. So choosing the right storage is the key for building an efficient application workflow. Uh, so we, we saw and we said that, yes, uh, clouds are good for a few things. and. Uh, on-prem storage is good for the other things. So the only thing is to build something, you know, as a, uh, to build a hybrid and a real hybrid approach. That that means that some of the data would be presented locally in the form known uh, to the applications, known to the users, and uh, friendly to the on-prem storage. And some of the data need to go to the object storage, which is again scalable, resilient, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 